everyone, welcome back to another video on the Space Koala channel. My name is Luca, and today I have a new filter that I've received that I would like to show you and try out. Oftalong has been coming out with so many interesting new filters over the past two to three years. And this time it is the new Alpera. Today I'm here to open it up, unbox it, see how it is and test it out. Let's get into it. Octolong has been very well known for filters such as the L Enhance and the L Pro and the L Extreme for quite a few years now. As time goes on, they are developing new technologies and they are coming out with better and better versions and better options for each of these. For example, when the L Ultimate came out, that was a very nice alternative to the L Extreme that had been out before. Then they came out with the LQEF filter that is a valid alternative for the L Pro. And finally, we are here with the Alpera that seems like to me on paper, it is a new and improved better alternative instead of the L Enhance filter. The L Enhance that has been out for quite a few years is a dual band narrow band filter that is 10 nanometers in the hydrogen range and 24 nanometers in the oxygen range. And now they have this new version that is 10 nanometers at both emission lines. This means it should be much more selective in the oxygen line, which should help with things like light pollution and moonlight that still were able to find their way through the L Enhance filter. Let's open this up. Yes, it is. I mean, it just looks like a narrow band filter. My plan for today is that I will be testing this out. So I will be comparing it to the LQEF filter and to have a true control group, I will also shoot the same targets without any filter. And if everything works well, we should see a gradual increase of selection of emission targets versus background. Let's go and test. And so I am here to test it on my extremely light polluted balcony under the full moon. It's the worst way to do astrophotography. It is the best way to test one of these filters. I have set up a plan. I'm using the Ascar V60 small refractor telescope paired with an ASI 2600 MC Air. And I have the filter wheel with the two filters I mentioned, which is the new Alpera. And then I also have the LQEF. I also have an empty slot with no filter just to see what we have there compared to no filter at all. I have set up a plan here with two targets. The first one being the California Nebula, which is a 100% emission nebula, and it should be a very good test of what the narrowband filter can do. And as a second target, I have set up the Horsehead Nebula for two reasons. The first one being that next to the actual horse head, we also have the flame nebula region, which is not a narrow band emission region, strictly speaking. It happens to be reddish, but it's not just a hydrogen region. So I want to see how selective it is really and how much of that remains in there. And more importantly, the way I compose it is that we have quite a few large stars in there. And the primary complaint with a lot of filters on the market is that they create these large, ugly halos around bright stars. And the prime example of that is usually when people try to photograph the Horsehead Nebula because you have Alnitec in there, which is so extremely bright and you always have a giant halo around it. So I thought that was the perfect way to test how this filter behaves. And let's get into it. Everything should already be set up and I'm starting. Here we go, I was shooting all night. I finished the plan, I had to modify it because I had some issues. So I made the horse head target a bit shorter and then I downloaded all the images and I already stacked them. So this is the process uh, that I've done. As you see, I have 20 of each of the three filters for the California and I have 14 images of each of the filters of the horse head nebula, nothing was rejected, everything was integrated, and I have the images. Before I get into the analysis of that, I can just show you a few of the raw images. So these are uncalibrated raw images. 
as they came out of the camera with each of the filters, starting out with this one. <laughs> okay, this is not debayered. I think it's better if I debayer them. Right, so I have now debayered them. This is the image with no filter whatsoever. You can see the California Nebula, but you see, I mean, it is very faint. Everything as you would expect, nothing much to see here. Then we have the LQEF filter. There is already a big difference in the amount of data you can see here. Like you're starting to see some structure in the nebula. But most interestingly, once I get to the L para filter, I mean, this is on another level, right? I mean, obviously it's noisy because it's a single shot of, of uh, five minutes. Clearly it is working to remove a lot of the light pollution as well as, as the moon. It was already a lot better for here, but obviously this is a much narrower, it's a 10 nanometer filter and therefore this is working exactly as expected. And then I took the stacks, which are these three. Again, going in the same order, I have first no filter and then we have the light pollution filter and finally the Alpera narrowband filter. Now here we're starting to note, it's not just the amount of data and contrast that is different, but it's also the, the color balance a bit different. And that is because we are letting through only the H alpha of the hydrogen. Whereas here, we're also seeing the H beta line of the hydrogen. And I think that's why it's a bit of a different shade. In any case, I then process these images in exactly the same way. I recorded that so you can see that I did exactly the same thing on all the images. And I got to these three images and I want to focus on these. All right, so same amount of data, same telescope, same night, same processing, everything. I don't think anyone was doubting whether the filters work, but I wanted to see the difference and the amount of difference anyway of a light pollution filter versus a narrowband filter. It is not only the nebula that is significantly brighter here in comparison, but what is very glaring in terms of differences is the star field like here, all you see is stars. Here it's a tiny bit better and then here the stars are much more suppressed. I mean, clearly it, it, it is superior by far for a target like this. Let's have a look at the other target as well, which was the Horsehead Nebula. This comparison was much more challenging on purpose. One thing that we need to check with every filter is how it behaves with very bright stars. On these extremely bright stars, you do see something of a halo, however, this is really negligible compared to what you would have with an older generation filter or some, some other brands. If I do narrowband filter shooting, I always take RGB stars separately anyway. So what is important here is that the halo is not disturbing the rest of the data so that you can replace the stars with RGB stars. A lot of people make the mistake of using narrowband filters on the Horsehead Nebula. And I wanted to show why that's not necessarily a good idea because it works really, really well on the Horsehead because we see that it is doing the filtering. However, we have regions here like this reflection nebula underneath or the flame nebula that is also, I think it's a combination of reflection and emission nebulas. And then this whole thing comes across as red because we're only seeing the small amount of hydrogen there. And then these reflection areas come across as greenish because we're only seeing the part of the broadband reflection nebula that happens to fall into the 10 nanometers of oxygen. This is not surprising to me. This is exactly what I was expecting, but it is a good test to see how much it is actually filtering because if it didn't look like this, but if this was still nice and blue and if this was still this 
yellowish whitish color, that would mean that the filtering doesn't work. Testing an object like this one, which is not meant for narrowband filters, I think is a very good way of actually testing the performance of the filter because you expect the image to not have the correct colors if the filter is working and it is the case. This concludes the test for me. Going back to the actual narrowband target that is what you're supposed to use these filters on, just blinking between the L para and the light pollution filter, it is glaringly obvious that it makes sense using one of these filters versus just a light pollution filter and especially versus no filter at all in my case because I live in a light polluted area. But if you're gonna shoot a narrowband target, it makes sense to actually use the narrowband filter versus the light pollution filter. Of course, the colors that you're gonna get are gonna be a little bit different and that is to be expected. That just means that the filter is doing what it's supposed to do. Would I use this filter? If I were to shoot with a color camera, which is something that I do on my RASA telescope, for example, I would because with a bandwidth of 10 nanometers, that means that even with a fast system like an F2 of the RASA or something similar, you are still gonna get the entire line of the hydrogen in that peak so you're able to use this as a narrowband filter on a wide range of optics from a really slow f10 F telescope all the way to an f1 point something whereas if you're going for something like an l ultimate filter that is something that is only going to work at a specific f ratio so in those cases i think a filter like this is a good choice obviously this should not be treated as a light pollution filter because that's not what it is. And I see a lot of people just starting out astrophotography and making this mistake of using their L enhanced filter on every single subject because they want to remove light pollution, but you remove all the signal as well. And this is what I meant to demonstrate with the horse head filter that this filter works very, very well for what it's designed for and it's not for everything. In terms of when it comes out or price, I do not know any detail whatsoever. I just received this filter to do some testing and review and give them feedback recently. But as soon as it's announced, and I assume most people are going to watch this video at that point, I will be updating the description and putting the link there so that you can verify the transmission diagram and all that. And I hope that you found this interesting and useful. I think it is so nice that we're getting more and more filter options on the market. This is definitely a new and improved option for the old L enhanced filter, both for the halos that are reduced and for the fact that it's much narrower on the oxygen band. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I wish you clear skies.